Hey there YouTube, this is Kage. I'm coming live with you with a video on how I gain CP and some of, some of potentially, well, all the tricks I have. And Some are going to be for free to play, some are going to be for pay to play, and some are going to be for excessively uh, crazy people. But we're going to go over a little bit of everything here today. So first to break this out, I'm going to go over one of the, the more commonly known things here is the equipment itself is the values of the equipment well what can you do with some of these pieces of gear uh, for example you'll see here that my slime slime dagger itself isn't the basic one that that used to be on there with the the rolls the, the martial brilliance and the reason for that is by removing some of these other other stats these little stats here these ones with like brilliance or things of that nature like I had something I'd roll this one too right now, is that it actually increases your CP because the game does not recognize combat power increases by those weapon substats. So anything you see here, let's, let's go over it real quick. Let's look at the alchemy list. Any of these spell potency, spell brilliance, the game doesn't care. The game, in terms of trying to rank up, trying to just chase leaderboards, the game, the game simply just looks at it and says, hmm. I don't see this as a stat increase. Sorry, gonna move on, gonna go and, you know, just pretend like you didn't do anything here. And so that is one thing you can do. I've done it with a couple of pieces of my gear, but if you're looking to squeeze out some points, 10, 20 here, so forth, that's one way to, to kind of do it. Would I advise doing it? Probably not. I mean, if you're, you really want to chase the leaderboard, you want to go gun ho, or you want to work on a specific family, then yeah, I mean, go for it. Sky's the limit. There's, you know, you could do this. You could definitely get, get that taken care of. So, I mean, there's certainly going to be certain stats that hold a higher precedent than others. Certain values that, that definitely mean more. We'll, we'll go here a couple just to see if we get anything. Anything that looks a little bit better to play with, and go back to my score and see if it increased. But so yeah, here, Zama wouldn't touch that. Agility six, four, and. So I lose two wisdom, we gain one agility there and three there. So let's see, let's go back to that screen see if we actually got an increase. Let's, let's take this over and see. It won't be a major one, mind you, it won't be something astronomical, but... Oh no, actually went down, down one CP, I was at 12. So I actually took a hit of <laughs> negative one CP by doing that. So there's certain also certain stats and I haven't really gone through the the pure numbers on what stat gets you more CP but there's certain things that carry more weight than than other stats you know, certain I noticed MP MP seems to do a lot for it I think even HP helps with the CP in terms of that stat booster but yeah it's you can definitely squeeze out some points here if you want to roll I mean there's an equipment event going on so that is one major way. Another thing here is, and this is a major one, and this one I am going to put a disclaimer around it right now. This can potentially cause you some real bad ramifications. I'm just going to throw out there because you are essentially going to be burning your skill scrolls on monsters. Now there's a couple of different ways you could do this. If you're looking to just go into the rankings and you're looking to try and take, like, let's say, Dragon... I mean, Dragon's a good one. You could probably push up on Dragon, probably push up on Nature. You could go in, you can you could take a look at all these monsters here, and you can skill all these guys. You can give these guys all skills. Now, the thing is, a C rank scroll, regardless of what monster you put it on, will be 50 CP points. That'll give you 50 points boosted, no problem. A B rank scroll will give you 150. Now, this is part of the disclaimer as well. I would not potentially put something really good on a, on a unit that's throwaway. And at the same time, I wouldn't put a throwaway on a unit that's really good. So if you have WK, for example, please don't give him some random melee ability just to get a couple points out of him. I mean, you, you can put some decent spells on him. And, and there's are debatable, of course, some, some used, you know, light, light space spells. Some people 
wanted to use something a little bit different to give him a little extra elemental diversity. But just be mindful of that. Yes, you can definitely get points out of that. You can definitely go ahead and do that. That will get you, you know, that'll net you a decent amount of points because, I mean, they gave away quite a few scrolls. So, you know, every, every event that pops up, buy those scrolls, you know, 750 here, 750 there, you know, you get an extra 150 to 300 CP out of them. So, yeah, you, you want those scrolls, you want to do that. Now, another thing is I've seen that people tend to, to chase certain units in terms of the story, in terms of farmable units. And I'm going to give you my list of units that I don't touch. There's a certain list. I, I'm going to leave them towards the very end. They've, they have them at a small threshold. I, but you'll notice here my Musifers too. Even that was kind of painful. My other, other units, my Tuscateer, he's two. My cat's hanging out with us now, too. That's that's great. I got, you know, the slime to three because of the event. May, may should have pushed it to four. But, you know, these are certain units where they're very painful to, to rank up. There's not a lot of probability in them. You're going to waste a lot of stam. Cat's having fun over here. So it's, you know, they're, they're not as good as if you were to go down to the bottom of the list and be like, well... You know, you could do a three-stam stage for some of these other little guys here. And you can get a couple of awakening levels. You may even be able to max them out for a fraction of the stamina that you would chasing a couple of ranks past two on the, the B-tier units or, or Musifer. Alternatively, the other units that I would say to absolutely not mess with as much as possible are, are going to be the special bounty mission ones. These these guys here, the King Slime, oh, wrong area. Uh, the King Slime itself, and the Knight. I would not mess with these. Now, you may ask me, why? Well, on a good day, 100% recruitment rate for, well, 40 of these will take me, I think, 37, because you're guaranteed to get get a couple of them. You're looking at five, you know, 555 stamp wasted to, to, get, to get them maxed out. And that's if everything goes to plan. But generally, these things are like a 1 in 5 drop. They're like a 1 in 6 drop. You're looking at 20, 2,500 to 3,500 stam just to get one of those done for a CP game. You can easily take that stamina, spread it across the board on a lot of these littler guys, even some of the C ranks themselves, and you can get stuff done. You can get... You can definitely make that stam work for you, and you can get a lot of these little ranks. Because I mean, a B rank for Awakening it does vary based on the unit and everything. But you're looking at maybe 100 points, ish, maybe 90. It, it does vary. So ultimately, you're not really getting a lot more points. You're better off just doing the normal rank ups for these guys. Make sure everything's five. Level them up as best you can. And keep the awakenings past two for later. I mean, I would get get them to two or three, depending on how you feel. Two, two preferably, because I mean, you get you get three free from that that bounty. So you only need like two more, like you know, two or three more to to get it to another another rank up. So those are ideally the best ones to do. You know, you, you push it to a small small area, not too bad. Because getting, getting 20 of, you know, the Ghost, or getting 20 of the Mole, or getting 20 of some of these other guys, or even 40, the amount of Stam isn't as bad. It, on a good day, you're looking at 200, 200 Stam to 300 Stam for one of those units done, and you're generally going to have some synergy. Now, what I mean by synergy is you're going to have some units where it, it's going to be very advantageous to... To farm them it's going to be you're going to have some units like this guy here hawk he's not it's it's not the bestest place to farm him with the first stage i believe i'll show you here this one here because here you you'll notice okay well i can farm him with slime slime's going to drop all all day every day it, it's just going to be brutal you're most likely going to have slime done to some extent because of the slime vent or if you're a newer player still may have a, a bunch of copies of him so you're going to get him done quickly and you're going to 
you're going to be wasting stam trying to get this unit. Well, a good synergy play here is with this guy. You can farm him here, and you'll get some hunter mechs as well. Hunter mechs is a seed rank unit, not bad. And he specifically has his own stage that you could farm where you just get hunter mech. So when you're done maxing out Hawkman, if you're like getting close to a couple of, you know, awakening on, on hunter mech or close to finishing him out, just go over to that other stage. Drop rate's not as great. I mean, I'd say about 15, 20% ish. Could be a little bit more, give or take. But you can get him done after you're done finishing Hawkman. So you've essentially just boosted up your stat points even more for the, the combat power. You've you managed to get the one unit done. You went over to the next one. And that's that's something else I look for. So I try and look for for synergy, for, for areas where I can, you know, rank things up. Like this one was good. Cactus Ball, because he had a stage where I didn't have a couple of units done. Like Jail Cat I didn't have done, so I worked. I actually didn't work on him with Jail Cat, though. I think I worked on him with another unit. Let's see here. I think it was not this stage here. There's there's one where I really didn't have too much of him and, and another unit, so I paired them together. Yeah, Meow Jason. So I sat there and, and I farmed both of those guys up, and then when I got one done, I swapped over to another stage and, and finished out there. But it's just little things like that because you're going to encounter a lot of unit bleed the, the further you go into this while trying to, you know, max out these awakenings to get these points up. I mean, right now I'm sitting at let's see, almost 3,000 3, recruitments done. And if I had to guess, if I had to throw a wild number out there, I'd probably say about 700 of those, maybe even a little bit more, were all misses in my opinion. They were, they were unit bleeds. They're they're not going to give you what you want. They just go towards a reward that absolutely sucks, and it's a complete waste of time. It's, it's just not It's not feasible. It's not worth it. But there's not a lot you can do about it. It's kind of like with the event going on with the raven and the bunny. Well, most people are going to get the raven done, and then you're going to sit there and you're going to hope you get the bunny while the, there's no other option. You're, you're stuck. you you could have done the Raven stage by itself, but that would have been a fool's errand. You would have, you would have got that Raven up no problem, and then you would have been even further into the rabbit debt, which not not fun. So there's there's that to consider. But these things there will definitely get you up there, and, and you don't have to max it every unit once. I I've been spacing things out, being very you know taking my time in terms of trying to get units up. Skipping around the board, playing playing with it, because sometimes it feels like drop rate's absolute shit, and it's like, well, I'm going to try a different unit right now. Or, some of these are simply so annoying to farm that it's going to it's going to take a lot. It's going to going to take a lot of patience. Like Mechanina, this this guy here. I mean, he he shares a pool with with a couple other monsters, and there's no like good alternative form. So it's well. I'm screwed here, you know. That there's not much I can do. It's well, whatever, whatever we can, you know, muster up in terms of, of that regard. Now you've you've got the you've got those options there. Another major thing to boost CP, and this is, you know, I I can say this now that I'm here is, you know, spacing out your characters accordingly with levels. If you have scrolls, if you have these scrolls to use and you have like 10, 15 units, even 20 units or more, you can space out that those scrolls and you get more return overall. Because, yeah, I can max out two units, but if I got 10 or 12 units, four levels, as opposed to two units, 10 levels, those are more points across the board. It's, it's just little things like that. It, you just, you know, you pace yourself, you, you don't go for... You don't go in for the kill right away. You, you look you look around. It's like with this event. Like with how I handled the event itself, I didn't try and max out certain monsters right away to, to start to get more points. I tried to get every monster, of course, first, you know, then rank them up, then get them leveled up, and then get them to some awakening level. Like, okay, well, day one, I was like, let's see if I can get at least all these guys, all these new units, at least like wanking one or two. So I had, you know, points for that. And then as the event went on, I was like, okay, well, let's see if I can do Awakening 3 and so on. So I set proper bars for those. So that's another thing to do. And, you know, just pace it out. And, and of course, 
I express this a lot. If you're looking to, you know, really play in the total CP, if you're looking for that leadership, you have to collect everything. You have to farm everything. You don't want to let things slip by because look at the King Bubble Slime situation. You can't get him in any capacity. You can't even get him if you wanted to, like, pay. You, you could be like, hey, Square Enix, give me, I'll throw $8,000 at you. Give me King Bubble Slime. It won't happen. Because even with all the Medini medals and all the other stuff in the world, it's a story farmable unit that was locked to that event. You can't even do do anything of that nature. Which brings us to some of my my power plays now in terms of crazy shit to do to to rank up CP on a more power level, on a more, you know, like uh, higher higher tier people like really throwing in is these iridescent orbs. Because these orbs, they are very, very hard to come by right now, so if you're pulling a lot and you're getting some S-rank units, the ticket is probably not the way to go. I mean, the only way I could see using that ticket, and again, it's gonna you're probably looking at 20 Gs to get the ticket, maybe, maybe a little bit more, could be wrong, but the only way I'd say it is if you know for a fact a unit's never going to come back and you want that ticket to get a unit you specifically do not have and have no chance of getting. That'd be it. Because, I mean, that'd be like 3K CP right there. That's a good deal. Whereas, if you were to get the orbs, you're going to get some CP. You're you're going to get some CP for, you know, upping your, your monster rank. And you may also unlock a mastery level, depending on how close you are, and, and boosting up the CP that way for those units. So it's very, it's very, very, very dicey. I mean, there, there are some situations where I can see the card would be, okay, it would be a, tempting. It would be very tempting if, like, you know, let's say Dread Dragon came out and he ended up in the the anniversary event for the six six months with with a pool of other mobs and he never had his own own unique unit and that that event passed and I didn't get him. I'd be like, okay, well, that's yeah, but but that's you know that that is what it is. So that's another that's another way to boost your CP. Also, you know, working with your awakenings. Let's say you you had monsters. Who you know? Apes specifically, I didn't spend much to start the game. So, you know, awakening like Dragon Lord up a rank will get you some points. Awakening up, you know, A tier units if you have enough of these extra stones. Because I've used some of these already to get a couple of points here and there just to to go even further up. After I'm done, you know, doing the other things, adding the skills, messing with the weapons, you know, making sure everything was leveled up, everything was ranked up. These these are all things you can do to to really do some power plays, but these are more on a, a higher end level. Now, personally, I didn't have an awakening on Dragon Lord, so that made sense. It was like, okay, well, I'm going to use him. I've got some, I've got these other units. That's going to get me some CP. That's great. Now, on to the really heavy hitter stuff, the stuff that there is no real secret to, and that is, you know, just pulling on everything. You know, pull, pull every banner, try and get at least one of every unit. I mean, if you're really a glutton for punishment, try and max them out and go from there. Because if you can max everything out, you will you will get points. But you also have to keep in mind that even though you're going into this with heavy hitting, heavy pulling, if you don't put the work on the back end towards the awakenings, towards these other things here, you'll just be somebody who spent a lot of money on the game and have a really crappy rank. Because this game does not reward you for being lazy. You can shoot up there, bet. Sure. But if you're looking to do, you know, top 10, top 20, you're going to throw 10 Gs in, you're going to throw 20 Gs in, game's not going to be kind to you. Game, game, this game rewards seniority. This game rewards people who are willing to put in the time and and we're here from day one. It's, it's just as simple as that. You know, I have every unit, so I'm in really good standing. But there are still, even, even from my standard, I have a couple weak points here. And I, I'll even point them out. I mean... I, I didn't max Waken a lot of the special units. I didn't max Awaken KM, Slime, Slime Queen, Slion. I didn't get, you know, True Lord Dragon Form past one or Dark Lord past one. I mean, and then even in the regular banner, I'm probably missing about 1,500 CP right now, realistically. So there's, you know, there's still gaps to be made. So if somebody was able to get all those, that'd be very interesting to see what would happen. But, I mean, you've got to... You can't just get all those things and just be like, well, 
mission accomplished. I, I win. No, you've got to get the levels. You've got to get the awakenings. You've got to play, play very, very aggressively to to get up there. And well, I'm not going to make it any easier on people. And I, I kind of like that about this game. I mean, I'll be honest: is you, you just can't come in here and spend triple the amount of money as as the last guy and and hope to to get somewhere. It's just not going to happen. Like even today. I've I've got almost 500 points in. I'll probably get another awaken or two done. Get maybe get another 100 or 200 points, and I'll just keep pushing until there's nothing left. But I mean, a good example of this, and, and I don't know this guy, but it's a very easy mistake to make. Is I mean, let's look at the rank four guy for example, real quick before we, we cut this. He's got all these great units. Like you know, he's got maxed out. He's almost got a max out Baramos too on top of having all these S ranks he's maxed. Well, there's there's a flaw to his account as well. You may not see it at first, but you look down here, there's a there's a missing slot. Well, that that definitely means he doesn't have one fifty two. Well, he's missing the Tiger Cup from the story, the C rank. How that happened Uh I don't know, but I mean it's just these that right there is is 20 2600 cp so if i was missing maybe about 2k and he was coming really close without him having that cub there's no way he could win like there's you know if he was like on even playing field but he had all these extra bells and whistles well he's 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 already lost the war and in fact he's actually lost rank 3 because i mean if he had that tiger cub he'd be able to knock also, right off, the, right off the pedestal, right there, and yeah. So you know, it's just things like that. But just to, to keep it simple, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out on Discord. My, my Twitch is Joe and Kage. You know, if you do want to play test some things or you want to go over some theories, because there are some some things here that I'm still I'm a little unsure of myself personally. Like there's the the amount of rank up points for different monsters is slightly different. Like you know, certain S rank units will give you more points for a max awaken than another S rank unit, and it could have a correlation to do with the base stats, things of that nature. But if you ever want to talk numbers, or if you want to throw some things my way, or things of that nature, well, let's sit down and let's you know let's go over it. I'm always interested to hear about the reasons, see where things are, and and heck, if you have anything that you think I missed in terms of you know power playing or doing CP or things you would have done differently. Throw it down in the comments and let's let's talk. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. You guys have a great day. Take care.